and hello YouTube. So this is Thomas Judge back once again with another installment of my Ultimate DC New 52 Reading Guide video series. To provide a bit of background, um, I have over the last few years read the entire DC New 52. That was 3,646 single issues. I've used that knowledge to create a comprehensive reading map which is the basis of this video series here. And that's based on my own first-hand experience and knowledge from reading the comics. Hopefully I can pass some of that knowledge on. This series is a careful, exhaustive, step-by-step -step walkthrough of each section of this map that I've created. And today's video is the second in the Superman family. This is video 3.2. Before we go any further, I would stress that even if you think you know what the New 52 is, or even if you're only interested in one specific character and no others, then you should still really go back and watch the introduction video to the series, video 0.0. .0. That video is going to cover a lot of the broad concepts and principles that underlie the design of the guide. I'm not going to re-explain them as I come across them here. So if you are watching the video and hear me mention things like the Forever Evil line, Type P readers or false crossovers, and you think it's all a bit confusing, that's because you need to go back and watch the introduction video. The link is in the description below. Similarly, I would stress that before watching this video, you should actually watch video 3.1, as that covers a lot of these Superman-specific fundamentals. So now, with no further ado, here is the Ultimate New 52 Reading Guide. Today's episode is episode 3.2, The Superman Family Continued. So if you're following along at home, Flashpoint is in the middle, and Superman is to the south in these blue circles here. So we're going to zoom in by looking at this, and this is the actual series called Superman. Last time we looked at Action Comics Superman, today we're looking at Superman Volume 3 from 2011 to 2016. That's volume with a big V, and it is of course collected as several volumes with a small V during the New 52. Now even this is not straightforward. If you read up on the history of the series, you'll see that it's actually much more complicated than you would believe in terms of volumes and numberings, renumberings and reboots. I think it's currently on volume five by now. But anyway, let's leave that conversation for another day. What you're looking at here is volume one, volume with a small v, called What Price Tomorrow? It collects issues one to six and written by George Perez. It was a weak and underwhelming start to the launch of what should have been an important series. Scrolling down, remember we're on the central line here. And scrolling down, we get to this volume. This is volume two, volume with a small v, called Secrets and Lies, with a great cover drawn by Kenneth Rockefort. That collects issue 7 to 12 in Annual 1 and written by Dan Jurgen. So again, you've got a different writer. Already a bad sign when you have a rotating cast of writers and artists on what should be an important series. Continuing to go down, what we have here, and this is important, is Volume 3, which is called Fury at World End. This was now written by Scott Lobdell, our third writer in as many volumes. It contains issues 13 to 17 and issue 0, and marks our first contact with the first crossover of the Superman universe, which is Hell on Earth. Now this crossover sprawled across issues of Superman, and Supergirl you see here to the right, and in fact even Superboy as well, which you see here. So, it's collected in its own collected edition, which I will show you here. And although this story starts with a lot of promise, it does eventually fall flat a bit, uh, the result of lots of different artists and writers working on it. However, one tip I will offer, and going back to the map here, the Superman issues in this volume do kind of offer a coherent summary of this particular story. They also contain the best art of the series and the best writing as well. In other words, although you might read the separate standalone hardcover, if you're just going to buy one trade collection, you might be better off just collecting this one slimmer volume, as it actually seems to make sense by itself. Having said that, issue uh, zero is actually part of the second crossover, I'll get to in a second. Well done, DC. What were you thinking? Anyway, the reading order for this event, Hell on Earth, is shown here. Feel free to pause it and make a note. Moving on down, we then get to volume four here, which is called Psy War, that's Psy P-S-I War, it collects issues 18 to 24 and annual two. That's fine, it's dull, it's not especially good or bad. Moving on down again, we will get to volume five called Under Fire. Now this collects issues 25 to 31. This also means it collects a single critical issue from the second crossover 
I mentioned before, that crossover is called Krypton Returns. And the issue, which is part of Krypton Returns, is issue 25. Remember, this volume collects issues 25 to 31, so only the first issue is part of Krypton Returns. It makes no sense when you read it here in this volume. Um, so what you need to really do is read the collected crossover, which will include issues from Supergirl and Superboy. That volume looks like this. And be warned, it also collects issue zero of this series, which you remember we saw collected earlier in the third trade collection which makes no sense given this is the fifth trade collection. So I know, here's the reading order for Crossover to Krypton Returns. Feel free to pause and, and follow through with that. But reading that by reading the trade collections will make very little sense. I recommend doing it through single issues um, or through the event book. So getting back to the map, uh, this was volume five. Let's scroll down and we will get to volume six, which is just before the convergence line. Um, so this is called Man of Oh, sorry, the men of tomorrow. And this is an interesting one and is going to cause a lot of confusion, so concentrate closely here. This marks the arrival of superstar writer Jeff Johns onto the title, as well as John Romita Jr., very popular artist. This was a desperate ploy by DC to revive sales, and actually this volume is pretty good as a result and well worth reading. There's a couple of weird things to keep in mind though. Firstly, this marks the shift from black spines to blue spines for this series. I mentioned that in the last video and in the introduction video. I don't know why this particular volume marks that, but it does. From this point on, everything in the Superman family is blue spine. Secondly, this volume isn't numbered. That's right, I call it volume six because it's the sixth one. However, it doesn't have a number on the spine, even though it collects issues 32 to 39. It has a numberless spine. It's just called The Men of Tomorrow and it's in blue. No number on it at all. Very strange. Even stranger in terms of what I'm about to tell you. So that was our volume six, like I say, just before the convergence line. Let's straighten up the map a bit. Let's scroll down and we get to volume seven, which is called Before Truth. Now, this should be called volume seven, but don't worry, just to confuse you, it's not. It collects issues 40 to 44 and has a blue spine, like I mentioned. And it does have a spine number, but that spine number is spine number one. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This is what I call a false volume. So whilst the numbering of the issues themselves hasn't changed, and it includes the normal issue numbering, issues 40 to 44, however, they've decided to revamp, revamp that and rebrand that as volume with a small v1. So on the spine, you'll find a one written on that. That's incredibly confusing for casual collectors, um, but I'm making it very clear to you here so you don't get too confused. Okay, so Before Truth is the seventh volume with a small v in this series. It's, and the next one as well, are both written by Gene Yang, as Jeff Johns has left. So continuing down, we get to the very last one in this series, Superman Return to Glory. So that's the eighth volume with a small v in this collection. However, the spine is blue and has got the number two on it because it is the second in this weird kind of rebooted continuity thing. Don't let that confuse you. It might have a two on the spine, but it is the eighth volume in the new 52. It contains issues 45 to 52 and annual three, which means that the last half of this volume is essentially completely unreadable. Um, unless you're reading the crossover events that swallow up those issues. I mentioned those in the last videos with their reading orders, and these are the back-to-back -back events, crossover four, Savage Dawn, and crossover five, The Final Days of Superman. Both are collected as separate coherent event volumes here, rendering this volume, volume eight, partially moot. So let's go back to the map. Um, that was Superman, and hopefully you're getting a bit of a feel for how this is going to work. Um, it can be really confusing for new readers. I'm doing my absolute best, and I really hope this helps. So, let's go back up to the top. Uh, let's see, we've done Action Comics, we've done Superman. Let's move over to Supergirl. So this is Supergirl Volume 6, which ran from 2011 to 2015. Unlike Supergirl from the 90s, who was actually a shape-shifting alien gel called Matrix. No, no, really, check it out on Wikipedia. This is an actual Supergirl, thankfully. However, in the New 52, they changed their disposition and outlook quite a lot from my favorite Supergirl, which is the one from volume with a big V5 
from 2005. Anyway, this right here is Supergirl Volume 6. Again, that's volume with a big V. And in, in this, she's a much angrier teenager who is dealing very badly with the death of Krypton and her new home now on Earth. Understandable, really. Um, this image you can see here of her floating in the sky um, is Volume 1, uh, which is called Last Daughter of Krypton. It collects issues 1 to 7. Following that line down, here we have this one here where she's fighting this weird big blue thing. Um, that's volume two, Girl in the World, which collects issues eight to 12 and issue zero. Continuing down, what you have here, with this Supergirl issue right here, is um, volume three, that's a volume with a small V called Sanctuary. Now, as this collects issues 13 to 20, this contains some of the issues needed for the full story of crossover one, Hell on Earth. Remember, this crossover is collected as a whole in its own volume elsewhere. Similar to the Superman series we were just talking about and which is just next door to it, um, this volume is readable as a standalone but only because it has a general through line of Supergirl being angry and upset. Personally I found her characterization quite unlikable in this. Continuing to scroll down, we go past the Forever Evil line that has no real impact here and we continue to go down until we get here. This is Supergirl Volume 4, there's a volume with a small V obviously, and that's called Out of the Past. It collects issues 21 to 25, and also Action Comics 23.1, which is a villain's issue. Uh, I hope you've watched some of my earlier videos where I discussed that in the Justice League videos. Now, issue 25 is included in Crossover 2 Krypton Returns, as is Superman 25, which is also for some reason included in this trade collection. However, despite including Superman 25, these two issues make no sense in this trade collection unless you read the crossover volume. So again, I have no idea why DC made that choice. Let's continue to scroll down. And we have uh, Supergirl volume five with a small V. So this is an odd one. It represents a tie-in with the Red Lantern series, which I'm gonna be covering in um, video four anyway. So volume five is called Red Daughter of Krypton. It contains Red Lantern 29 and the double-sized Green Lantern Red Lantern issue 28, as well as Supergirl 26 to 33. Now, this is important to highlight. Red Daughter of Krypton is not a crossover. It's a tie-in that is all pretty much collected here. You're fine with that. Just read this, read volume five, Red Daughter of Krypton, that's fine. The reason I say this is because I don't want anyone doing what I did, which is wasting an afternoon on the internet trying to buy a standalone event book that doesn't even exist. So, continuing down, we get to the very end. The last Supergirl volume, volume six, Crucible, contains issues 34 to 40 and the future's end one shot. It then ends at the convergence line, which is just below it there. Okay, hope that was helpful guys. And we've got a little bit more time, so I am going to cover one last thing, which is gonna be Superboy. So the next series, Superboy, two run from 2011 to 2014 is volume 5 of Superboy that's volume with a big V and this starts with volume 1 with a little V Incubation which contains issues 1 to 7 so if we scroll down and follow that line through we get to this one here oh there we are uh, and this is Superboy volume 2 right, you see it there Superboy volume 2 Extraction, which contains issues 8 to 12 and issue 0 and issue 10 from Teen Titans. Now this tie-in with Teen Titans isn't too exciting, but don't worry. The issue you need to make sense of it is here. You don't need to read Teen Titans first or even at the same time. Following that thread down, we come to here, which is the third volume. It's called Lost. It contains issues 13 to 19 and Annual 1, which means most of the issues are in the crossover one, Hell on Earth, which I've already discussed. Again, these aren't the strongest issues of that crossover. And again, this volume kind of makes sense without reading the full crossover. But that's not recommended. We go past the Forever Evil line here, and then we get to volume four, which is uh, quite a cool cover. I love the picture of Crypto on the front. Um, it's called Blood and Steel. It contains issues 20 to 25 and Teen Titans Annual 2. So, as well as Superboy 2025, you'll need to dig out the single issue, Teen Titans Annual 2. It also, as we've seen before, contains Superman issue 25, because this volume contains the Superboy issues 
that are in crossover to Krypton Returns, which we discussed earlier. And again, this all basically makes very little sense without reading the crossover issues and the event book. So you can read some of Volume 4, some of the one I'm showing you now, um, but then at some point you'll just get lost and be like, I need to get the Krypton Returns event book. So let's follow it down to the last one in this video, which is here. And that's Superboy Volume 5. Now, I have lots of mixed feelings about this. Volume 5 is called Paradox. And again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but frankly, I thought the changes to the character, which I can't stress enough, were absolutely random and absolutely massive, made no sense, and I was deeply unimpressed. Anyway, this includes issues 26 to 34, and the Futures End one-shot. Well, I hope that helped. I'm just going to scroll out as usual and let you guys get a bit of perspective as to where this fits in. As you can see, there's still some Superman family-related things to go through, which we will be going through in the next video. But that's where we are on the map if you're following along at home. So that wraps it up for today from me. Um, the next video is going to dive into the other Superman lines, and now that we've established the basics, should hopefully cover a bit more detail. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, please share more widely across all the medias that you can. Um, I'll always be really interested to hear your thoughts on the New 52 and on this series of videos as it progresses. Um, is it helpful? Is it clear enough? Let me know in the comments below or tweet me at I am Thomas Judge. And as always, these videos are only possible thanks to supporting this channel by heading over to Amazon.com and picking up the first episode of my prose novel, No Gods or Kings, available for less than a dollar. A series of interviews from a future where superpowers are real and the entire world has changed dramatically as a result. If you have Kindle Unlimited, the first volume is completely free anyway, and all I need for your support is just to pick it up, read it, leave a review, and see what you think of the series. I don't have adverts on my videos, I don't take sponsorship or Patreon or anything like that, so please just support this video by picking that up. If you're interested in downloading the map and infographic I've created for this, um, that's also available on my website, which is nogodsorkings.com, which is in the description below. And so while you're there, why not pick up the first book and support the channel? Until next time, stay classy.